Hi, this is Stu Miniman coming to you from Wikibon World Headquarters in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Going to be focusing on big data for this CUBE conversation. At Wikibon, our research agenda is, is covering cloud, big data, software-led infrastructure, how all of these disruptive technologies are, are blending over. And, and of course, uh, we always want to allow IT practitioners uh, to share with their peers and doing that through uh, deep conversations as well as some surveys. So joining me for this segment is our lead big data analyst, Jeff Kelly. Jeff, uh, just completed a, a, an extensive big data survey. Can you tell us a little bit about that survey and, and what was the goal that we were looking to get out of it? Absolutely. Great to be here, Stu. So we set, a, set out to survey the big data community to really understand um, how big data analytics is being applied in the enterprise, uh, kind of the state of deployment. So where are we in terms of uh, maturity of the market, maturity of the practitioner community, um, and of course, another key area was talking about the challenges and the barriers that practitioners are facing in terms of getting the full value of the investments they've made in big data technology. Um, we do hear a lot about, you know, a lot of uh, talk about all the promise of big data, but we wanted to find out, you know, just where are we in that journey from, you know, all that talk to, to reality and actually delivering on that uh, promise of big data analytics. So, um, talked to a little over 300 practitioners from a number of industries. Uh, some were IT practitioners, others were line of business practitioners. So uh, some really fascinating insights. All right, Jeff, can you help unpack for us what were the top level findings that you received from the survey? Sure, so I think from a, from a very high level, we were uh, just amazed by the general uh, opinion that the practitioners have around the promise of big data. So, um, you know, 90% of respondents believe that big data is either, you know, critical to the, uh, the competitive nature of their organization going forward, or at the very least an important complement to some of their existing data warehouse, BI, and data management capabilities. Uh, virtually uh, under 5% thought big data was just a, a meaningless buzzword or had, uh, you know, was ill-defined and really didn't have application in their enterprise, which, you know, if you think about, well, Terms like big data, previously cloud, um, go through these uh, progression of, of um, how, how practitioners view them, whether that's, again, just a buzzword or, or something that's really going to have an impact. Um, and the fact that big data has come to this point where the vast majority of our respondents believe it's so critical to their business, I think says something about the uh, the technology and the approach and the impact it's going to have on the enterprise over the years to come. Yeah, so, so Jeff, I know we've looked at getting beyond the definition, talking about um, some of the struggles users have been having to really get value out, and, and it seems like we're kind of turning the corner uh, in some of that adoption. Uh, we are. So we asked our survey respondents about where are they in terms of their deployments? Are they in production? Are they doing POC kind of experimentation phase? Or are they still in that evaluation phase? Uh, about 30% of our respondents said they are actually supporting applications running on big data infrastructure in production. Uh, so that's a pretty reasonably high number considering where we are in this market. It's a fairly new market. I mean, if you think about um, you know, Hadoop is kind of the poster child for big data, and that's you know less than 10 years into its existence. So the fact that we're that far along, um, I think, it says something about how rapidly this market's uh, maturing. That said, that still leaves about 70% that are either uh, simply experimenting or even just evaluating their options when it comes to big data. Uh, so there's still a long way to go. Um, so that was you know one of the areas we focused on. We also talked uh, kind of a little bit more in depth about what they're doing with Hadoop specifically. Um, you know, about a third of our uh, respondents are actually using Hadoop in their organization today. Um, and very interestingly, uh, this is one of the more surprising findings from the survey, only about a quarter of them are actually paying customers of one of the Hadoop distribution vendors. Um, and the majority, over 50%, are actually using essentially roll your own Apache Hadoop that they downloaded uh, for free. So, uh, you know, again, what that tells us is we're still very early in this market, um, huge opportunity for those Hadoop vendors to capture that that business. And I think we're reaching a tipping point where a lot of those uh, practitioners who are not yet paying for support from a vendor such as a Hortonworks or a Cloudera or MapR uh, are gonna come to the point where they're gonna have to make a decision with which one of those folks to go with um, as they go to production. So we're getting to that tipping point and it's important for the Hadoop vendor community um, to really be aware of this uh, and be on their game. The next 12 to 18 months is gonna be critical uh, for those vendors in this market. So uh, I want to talk about kind of the old way versus the new way. Uh, if you talk about kind of traditional data warehousing versus Hadoop, um, is this a zero-sum game? Uh, was this new projects that we were using big data and Hadoop for, or are we starting to see an erosion of, of the data warehouse market and a shift um, from where customers are going to be going? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a little bit of a, um, 
we, some contradictory findings on the surface. So we, we found that uh, close to 50% of practitioners, as I mentioned earlier, see big data uh, and things like Hadoop as complementary to their existing data warehouse uh, and BI and data management practices. Uh, yet, we also found that over 60% of practitioners who, are, who have deployed Hadoop today have migrated at least one workload from a data warehouse or a mainframe or some other legacy system to Hadoop. Um, and those are for, you know, a lot of those are for cost savings reasons. Hadoop is, you know, a tenth the cost of your traditional data warehouse. So, so those seem to contradict each other. It's complementary, but you're seeing disruption. Um, I don't find them complementary, uh, sorry, contradictory, that is. Uh, to me, complementing doesn't mean there isn't some disruption going on. Um, so while we don't believe the data, uh, Hadoop is going to replace the data warehouse, at least certainly not in the short uh, to medium term, there is no question that there's competition going on for the different workloads where the two do overlap. Um, there are certainly areas where the enterprise data warehouse is going to excel over Hadoop, and there's going to be things that Hadoop does much better than the data warehouse. But increasingly, there's this blurring of capabilities uh, one over the other. And that's where we're seeing competition uh, from the Hadoop side of the house with the data warehousing side of the house. So we're definitely going to see some of these workloads migrate. Uh, it's going to be interesting to watch how the data warehouse vendors react to that um, to try to kind of maintain their business, whether they embrace Hadoop or try to kind of Put it in a uh, put it in a small box off to the side. Um, will be interesting to watch. But so that there's complementary. Uh, it's certainly complementary, but we're seeing this disruption still happen uh, for particular workloads where there is uh, kind of overlapping capabilities. So you, you mentioned that uh, one of the things that surprised you was you know what distribution people were using. I'm wondering what other nuggets you found uh, in the survey. Uh, things that you know challenge your existing beliefs or general practices out there, or, or just generally surprising. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the more surprising elements was around uh, the use of public cloud to support big data analytics projects. Um, you know, we think here at Wikibon that long-term cloud and big data are going to be intertwined uh, significantly, but we're talking long-term 10, 20 years. Um, what we found was that, again, about, I believe it was over 60% of practitioners uh, are using the public cloud for some element of their big data analytics project. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they're using Hadoop in the cloud. Um, it could mean any other kind of any component in big data analytics, you know, takes uh, into account things like Hadoop and NoSQL, but also to some extent traditional databases, uh, data integration tools, other data management tools. Uh, but nevertheless, that's a pretty high number, 60 plus percent using the public cloud for some uh, aspect of the big data analytics project. So that surprised me because we do hear a lot about the concerns, particularly from enterprises in highly regulated industries and where security and privacy are concerned about moving data from their internal data centers out to the public clouds, such as AWS or uh, Microsoft Azure or somewhere else. Uh, so, so that number uh, caught my eye. And you know what I think is going on here is we're seeing a lot of the early experimentation happen in the cloud. Um, AWS in particular does a great job of offering uh, really easy to use, and easy to spin up capabilities around things like Redshift and EMR, so the developers can go into that environment, uh, create prototype applications, um, and test those out. And I think that's what we're seeing a lot happening. Uh, to some extent, data scientists going in there and using some of the kind of data sandboxes there to do some experimentation. The next question, of course, is going to be as we move to production workloads, um, are, are enterprises and practitioners going to bring these back in-house, or are they going to keep them in the cloud? Um, I think that's an open question, but I think there's an opportunity both for um, those vendors that can provide a private cloud environment so that they can shift what the work they've done in the public cloud, move that to a private cloud environment, bring some of the uh, benefits of a cloud-like deployment, a service-like deployment to those internal uh, big data analytics projects. Uh, but also, obviously, AWS would like to expand those to really enterprise-grade full production deployments. So we'll see how they uh, attack that problem. It's, it's, I would say, both a perception issue uh, as well as an actual technology capability issue around things like data integration, data movement. Yeah, to Jeff, so we, I mean, you know, cloud is an area that I focus a lot on. So um, I, just to follow up on that, are people just using the cloud as a platform where they can do tests or are they using the services? So you mentioned things like Redshift, Shift, uh, you know, uh, Google with uh, Google Application Engine. Uh, are they building the apps to be kind of a board in the cloud app that's going to live there? Uh, is it just a platform that they can do test on? Um, is are they you know really using some of the more advanced services they have? It sounds like it's a bit of a mix. It's a bit yeah. of a mix, and yeah. this is an area where we're definitely going to do a lot more investigation as part of our big data service, and we're going to continue to do these uh, surveys and other work uh, with the community both qualitative and quantitative research to try to determine some of these questions. So
So uh, we're working on that now, and I think you know it's, it's a, it remains to be seen. It's it's an open question, and it's going to have pretty big implications for uh, whether it's the cloud providers or the more incumbent. Uh, IT practice, yep. I IT uh, vendors. Sure, absolutely, and uh, definitely AWS has the lead in this space. Uh, Google has some nice tools there, and then of course you've got IBM with Bluemix, HP with Helion, and many others that are trying to challenge in that space. Uh, be interested to see what they can do in the second half of this year and beyond. Uh, so, uh, last question I have for you is, you know, from a research perspective and following up on the survey, what next steps do you have? What What are you going to be looking at, uh, you know, later this year from from mm -hmm. uh, follow up? Well, uh, so we this was a pretty extensive survey, the one we've just completed. And so, in fact, we've got lots of data that we're still going through now. Uh, you're going to see from Wikibon a number of research notes that are going to roll out over the course of the summer and into the fall uh, that draw on a lot of this, the findings we have in this survey and also with the, you know, the ongoing uh, outreach we have with the community and our other research efforts. Uh, then in Q4, we're going to do a, yet another survey. In fact, this is kind of, you're going to see this as an ongoing uh, area of exploration for us. We're doubling down really in the, in the research studies and the survey work we're doing. So you're going to continue to see surveys coming out. You're going to continue to see forecasts. We're going to be publishing uh, our Hadoop and NoSQL forecast, uh, market sizing and, and revenue forecast for the remainder of the year. You'll see that in the fall. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. There's a lot happening. Uh, we're really excited about our research service here at uh, Wikibon around the big data space. All right. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for spending the time. Of course, go to wikibon.org slash big data to find all the research. Go to siliconangle.tv to see the upcoming events. Jeff will be hosting uh, many shows in the big data space uh, throughout the rest of 2014. And thank you for joining us for this uh, segment of Cube Conversations.